Hello and welcome to today's video that is made possible by my Patreons. If you also appreciate my content and would like to support my channel, don't hesitate to visit my Patreon page, the link is in the description. Last year I made a review of the Varnish Assortment 1 from Hamro. You can see the video if you have missed it here. But I have been reading the comments that you leave and I see that some people have some trouble applying the varnish and mostly they write to me that the varnish gets sticky too fast. This is something that I have also noticed but I don't have any trouble with it so maybe it is because of the way that I varnish that I don't get any problems. So I decided to make the video of today where I will show you how I apply a layer of varnish I have also seen in the comments that some of you tend to add some kind of oil or solvent in the varnish. Hamaro writes in the instruction that is in the box with the assortment that you don't have to dilute the varnish. And I have to say that I am also very skeptical about adding anything else in the varnish. The problem is that if you add, uh, for instance, linseed oil, that is something that I read in the comments, you might uh, get a situation where the linseed oil doesn't dry as fast as the rest of the varnish so you make a surface made of two different substances one is drying fast and becomes hard the other one remains a bit softer that means that the softer part can move a little bit and break the hard parts and then you get Cracle in your varnish. A lot of people don't like it. There are some people that like the cracle effect and make it on purpose. I don't like it and I think that there are a lot of people that don't want to see it. That's why I wouldn't add anything to the varnish. I think that it is better to train a little bit more and understand how to use this varnish and use it as it is than to start adding stuff. The only thing that I add in the varnish is color. And I use the colors which are also made from Hamro. When adding the color the varnish becomes a bit more diluted. But I don't know if that also extends the drying time. And I think that it doesn't. I will use this small viola to show you how I work. I know that it looks a little bit strange. And it does. Because it is a small viola. It is a half size viola. But it is very white on its bottom and that makes that these violas, although they are very small, they sound really very good. I have varnished already two of these and played on them and I was impressed of the sound results. As I said also in the review video of the varnish assortment and they also write it in the instructions, you have to sound the instrument between every layer. To do that I use water and sandpaper. I use this 2400 sandpaper. This is Micromesh. I bought it from Dictum. I think that you can use also regular sandpaper but be a bit careful it might be too aggressive. If it is too aggressive use maybe 3200. When you sand the instrument between the layers you do two things. First of all, you make the surface a bit smoother and some small imperfections go away. And you make the surface a bit router. So the new layer has more grip on it. I prefer to use water instead of oil to sandpaper the instrument because with water I am really sure that it will dry correctly and nothing will remain on the instrument. I use a paper towel to clean up the instrument but afterwards I mostly leave also the instrument half an hour to dry. Then I am sure that there is no water and that I won't have any problem applying the varnish anymore. If you use oil as oil doesn't evaporate you can clean it with your paper towel, but there could be, especially in the corners, some droplets which then mix in your brush or in the varnish and then the whole party starts. 
I just finished sounding the instrument and it is nice and dry. Now I will apply a layer of varnish and I will put varnish without any color on it. When I'm varnishing an instrument, for the small instruments, violin and viola in any case, I do it in three parts. The upper part, the middle and the lower part. As soon as the upper part is finished and I start with the middle, I don't touch the upper part anymore. Then the brush will stick on the varnish. Now at the beginning I can keep moving the varnish so I can spread it nice and equally. There is one hair in the varnish. I can pull it off. Now that I am done with this part, you can see how shiny it is. I'm not going to touch it anymore. I'm going to do this part. Put a little bit of varnish again on my brush. And again, this part is finished. It's a bit hard to show you that you don't see any difference between the two parts. And we are going ahead with the third part. And again, without touching this too much, only a bit here where they meet. Now the back is finished, one equal layer, and we are not going to touch it anymore. Now I'm going to do the ribs, and the back is finished. For the ribs it's a bit of the same. I do them one by one, first the C and then I go until here. You don't have to be afraid to leave some very small lines with the brush because this varnish, as it dries, it tends to get a bit more 
uh, equal. It moves a little bit still as it's drying. So the lines tend to disappear. They don't have to be too big, otherwise they will still be there. Okay, now ribs and back are finished. We go to the top. Once again the same, in three parts. The F-holes are going to give some trouble. Varnish tends to go in and then makes droplets here, so I have to be very careful. And now last, but not least, the scroll. Which is very difficult to, <laughs> to avoid making drops. Not too much varnish on the, pe on the brush. Let's start from the middle. As for the scroll, you need to go a couple of times back to clean up some drops. You will have to work a little bit faster so that the varnish doesn't get dry. That's it. The whole instrument is varnished in one layer, in one time, here we have still some drops, okay. I will put it in the chamber, I will fix it here for now. So this is the way that I work with this varnish, as you see I don't get stuck but I always go forward, never go backwards. I like this varnish a lot, I, but I think that is important to learn to work with it. Now I have used it on two violins, two of these violas, this is the third one, and I'm also varnishing a cello, so I have uh, varnished five to six instruments now, and I'm a bit used to it. I understand that if it's the first time that you use this varnish that you have some problems. I hope that I could help you a bit. Thank you very much for watching. Many thanks to the Patreons for supporting the channel, don't forget to visit my Patreon page. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like this video and I will see you next time again. Bye bye!